in this video I will be doing a review and testing on one of the newest sound card or all-in-one podcast console of 2022 which is the Monocaster E2 and by the way I would like to thank Mono for sending me the Monocaster E2 single mic bundle without further ado let's get started and this is what the package comes with if you will get the monocaster e2 single mic bundle first this is the monocaster e2 or console and it does comes with the condenser microphone so this is the one and it's a cardioid or polar pattern which is sensitive to the noise coming from the front and of course it does comes with an xlr uh, cable there you go and then it comes with a pop filter this one here and with a stand and the shock mount and it, it does comes with a trrs two of them which can be used for recording or live streaming it does comes also with an earphone and as you can see it looks like the cord is is long so which is actually good because the normal cord that you buy is not that long so this is the one if you want a longer one so this is better and this last cord here is the type A USB to type C USB, which you can use if you want to connect your console to a computer or if you want to charge your console. And now let's uh, set up the stand. Okay, so it's very simple. So pretty much you just uh, screw this one into here. Okay, something like that. And this uh, shock mount here just uh, screw this one to the top portion of this stand now to ensure your shock mount is tight enough i suggest uh, loosen this uh, knob on here and then pull it up okay so again you can loosen this knob on here and then pull it up and now tighten it there you go okay so there it is and now to uh, install this uh, pop filter simply snap it on the edge of the shock mount there you go so something like that okay and now if you're good tighten this end here and then this one also so there should be a thing here to tighten it okay there you go there we're almost set and now this one here so you can screw this one also from this uh, center there okay so there you go there it is there you go so again make sure it's uh, tight enough but not so tight okay just ensure your front portion so there you go so that one that's uh, where your pop filter is pointing as well so to move your pop filter you simply slide it to the front of your microphone or you can just install the pop filter after you install the microphone let me show you the back side of this Monocaster E2. So this is the back side of this Monocaster E2. So as you can see, the first port there is for the microphone that requires XLR cable, which is this one here and this one, the one that we just connected. And uh, instrument to this is if you want to connect, let's say, a keyboard or a guitar. And uh, this one here is your mic settings. So condenser microphone is 40 dB and then dynamic. If you're going to be connecting dynamic microphone, there is an option here to set to 50 dB and 60 uh, dB. And the microphone, another microphone input here, that is if you have the uh, condenser, another condenser microphone, let's say uh, you have a BIM 800 condenser microphone, which is I will be connecting in a bit. So I will uh, be using this port later. And aux in, this one here, if you are going to connect an external source of your background music, so you can use this one via 3.5 mm, and that is, you can use this cord here, TRRS. And I'll show that to you also in a bit. And monitor speaker, uh, this is if you are going to connect an external speaker. So for that, you can also use this one here. Or if you have the uh, TRS, the one that has two lines, you can use that also to connect to your external speaker. And then Live 1 and Live 2, these are the ports you can use for streaming or recording purposes. And also you can use this USB-C if you're going to connect to your laptop. You can use this one also for streaming or recording. And this one here is for charging. So you can either use a power block to connect 
this USB type A and then this one of course the type C goes here or you can even use a portable uh, charger. Let me just turn this one to the other side. So this one here, you have two ports here or two outputs for your earphone or headphone. And that's where I will be connecting this uh, earphone in a bit. And now it's time for testing. So what I will do is I'm going to use uh, this uh, phone here as uh, my device uh, to record. And this iPad here, I will use this one as a source for uh, my background and music. Before we start the connection, let me just show you uh, with this uh, microphone the setup on here. Just so you know, you can still adjust the height of this uh, this microphone. So the max is up to there and you can tighten it by, of course, turning this uh, to the right. And also from here, you can also uh, tilt this one. So you can move it right that or like this or to the other side. And if you wanted to turn it, Okay, let's say for example like that and if you want to turn it of course you can turn it let's say you wanted to move it like that or just like like that way just loosen it so pretty much you're going to loosen it from here when you screw the microphone into this one and then if the front is here you just simply move your pop filter to the front something like that and also if you're having a hard time connecting your xlr uh, cable simply tilt it that way and then tighten it and then that's the time you connect this part here so it's easier that way okay so there you go and then you're good and then just put it back and once you're done simply tighten it and then set it up whatever way you wanted your front of your microphone is pointing and now let's start the connection. First, let's connect this uh, condenser microphone. So of course, the other end to that goes here. Okay, there you go. And then we will be connecting one TRRS. So this one here, we will connect this one to here, to live one or two or live output one or two. As I mentioned earlier, we will be doing a sample recording so that you can hear the actual recorded audio from this uh, Monocaster E2 while I am doing the review. Okay, let's connect it to live output one. And as I mentioned earlier, because of this phone, uh, the device that I will be using for recording doesn't have an audio jack, then I will be using this lighting adapter. Okay, and let's connect the other end to here. Okay, and the other TRRS will be using it to connect. So this one here, we will be using this one to connect from this monocaster to here as our background music. So for that, we'll be connecting one end to the one that says aux in, and then the other one we will connect to the source of your background music. It could be an MP3 player, a tablet or another phone, or it could be a laptop. Okay, so we will connect this one to here. Just locate the uh, headphone port of that device. Okay. And now I will be connecting also this monocaster to a laptop. So for that, I will be connecting it from here to the one that says USB-C. So this one here, USB-C to USB type uh, A. So USB-C goes here. And then the other end, just connect it or locate the USB type A port of your uh, laptop. Okay, there you go. And also, I will be adding another condenser microphone. So I will be connecting my uh, BM800 condenser microphone. So this one here. So I connected already the other end over there and the other end to that is this. So again, if you have another condenser microphone, then this is the cord you will need. So that's an XLR to 3.5 mm. And normally, if you buy a BM800 condenser microphone, it comes with this cord. So the other end goes here, so the, to the one that says mic 2. And lastly, I will be connecting an earphone so I can monitor the uh, audio. And the earphone or headphone is just down here, so I'm going to use one port. There you go, and now we're all set. And there you go, we're now all set. Okay, so as you can see, I had turned on al already my uh, device on here. This is the device, again, as I mentioned. This is the one I will be using for recording. And what I will be doing is I am going to be uh, syncing the audio output 
from this recorded video audio from here to the other camera that I'm using right now so that while you are watching this review, you can hear right away the audio output coming from this Monocaster E2 while I'm testing it out. Okay, so let's now hit the record on here. There you go. So right now what you're hearing, that is the recorded audio from this device on here. So as you can see, I had turned already to 48 volt phantom power on here. Otherwise, this condenser microphone will not work. Okay, and now let's start off with the volume knobs on here. So the first volume knob here is the aux. So this is the volume control. If you are going to add a background music to your, let's say if you're doing a podcast or streaming or doing doing a, a something that needs a background music. Okay, so let's uh, test it out by uh, playing a song or a background music from this iPad. Okay, let's play one uh, background music from here. Okay, let's just forward it to the middle. Okay, so uh, again, as I mentioned, you can control the volume from here by turning it up like that or lower it starting uh, to the left. There you go. And also, just so you know, you can uh, control the background music also from that source itself. And from here, you can control the background music from wherever is the volume control of that uh, device. There you go. So something like that. Okay, so let's uh, pause it now. Okay, and the next volume knobs are the low, mid, and high. So this is the equalizer. It's up to you to test whatever is your preferred vocals. So let's uh, give it a test. Maybe let's put some reverb on it. So now let's uh, start by uh, turning the low to zero. Soundtrack testing one, two, one, two, three, four. So that's what it sounds like. If the low is on high, then it sounds like that. And now let's put it back. Let's try the mid. If the mid is at zero, then it sounds like that. And if the mid is at the max, it sounds like that. Okay, now let's try the high. If the high is at zero, it sounds like that. If the high is on high, it sounds like that. So uh, low is more of a bass and then the high is more for uh, treble. But uh, if you don't know what to do, I suggest just set them at the middle and you should be fine. Okay, so let's lower first the reverb from here. Okay, so now the next volume knob is the instrument. So the instrument, this is the volume control if you are going to connect, let's say, a guitar or a keyboard. And the next volume knob here is the peach. And this is your voice changer. To the right gives you the female voice and also a baby sound, which is the sound is more higher, higher pitch and more thinner. And as you turn it to the left, it gives you the male sound and it goes deeper also when it comes to the voice. Let's try it. Okay, so this is going to the left, sound check testing one, two. And then some more, sound check testing one, two. Sound check testing one, two, three, four. Okay, let's put it back and now let's turn it to the right. Sound check. Testing one, two, one, two, three, four, sound check. Testing one, two, one, two, three, four, sound check. And the last one, sound check. Testing one, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's put it back again. And now the next volume knob is the monitor. And the monitor is simply your audio you can hear from your earphone or headphone. And the next volume knob here is the output. This is one of the most important volume knobs on here. Because if this is at zero, let's say for example, I'm recording right now. If I turn this to zero, no audio will be recorded. Okay, let's give it a sample. But when I turn this up, now you can hear me again. So uh, this has to be on high all the time, in my opinion, if not at the max, if you are doing your recording or live streaming. Even if the volume here of your mic is uh, on high, if this is at zero, you won't hear anything from your recording or even if you're doing a live streaming. And from here, as you noticed earlier, I'd turn on the 48 volt phantom power. Otherwise, this condenser microphone will not work at all. Okay, and I had connected also, as I showed you, the BM800 condenser microphone. Now let's give it a test. And now let me try using the other microphone. Let me turn this to zero and then I'm going to turn the volume up from the mic too. 
Okay, sound check, testing one, two. Right now, I'm currently using the Beam 800 condenser microphone, and that's what it sounds like. And if I'm going to add some effects to it, Sound check, testing one, two, one, two, three, four, sound check. Okay, let's go back to the other microphone, the mono microphone. I'm going to turn this to zero. Okay, sound check, testing one, two. I am now using again the mono uh, microphone. As you can see, the mono microphone audio output is way better than my Beam 800 condenser microphone. Maybe it depends on the Beam 800. Maybe there are some expensive ones of Beam 800 condenser microphone that has a better sound. But anyway, you can always test or you can always test whatever you have. Okay, so now let me turn the uh, reverb to zero again. And now let's move on to the middle part on here and uh, this is the good feature that uh, this monocaster e2 has is because you have the freedom this time to uh, create or record the sound effects that you for sure will use on your let's say live streaming and uh, so you're not stuck on whatever is a preset uh, recorded uh, sound effects on it so in other words every time you do your live streaming you can record whatever new sound effects you want to use and uh, by the way the ones on top the one that says a b c uh, the maximum you can record from here is a minute and then this uh, eight uh, keypads on here uh, the maximum you can record is 20 uh, seconds okay let's give it a try to record is very simple tap hold release when it starts blinking if it blinks slow it means you can start recording and then if it blinks uh, faster that means something is in it or or you have recorded already on it and it's uh, and it's uh, deleting it so you have to wait until it stops blinking because that is the way of uh, showing you it it's deleting it Okay, let's give it a sample. Maybe let's use uh, letter B. If you like this type of video, please like and subscribe. Okay, there you go. And let's listen to it. If you like this type of video, please like and subscribe. Okay, and also if you want to loop it, so which means if you want to uh, repeat that uh, background uh, uh, music, just uh, hit this loop uh, button on here and it will repeat that sound effects. Okay, and now let's uh, delete the one that we recorded and then let's record another one with the effects. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, to delete it, we have to tap this one and you can see it will blink faster. There you go. So as you can see, it's, it's blinking faster and let's wait until it stops. There you go. So now it's ready again for us to record a new one. Okay, let's tap it again. If you like this type of video, please like and subscribe. Okay, let's stop it. There you go. And now let's play it. If you like this type of video, please like and subscribe. Okay, there you go. And again, if you want to loop it, so same thing. So let's press this one and then let's press the loop button. If you like this type of video, please like and subscribe. Okay, let's if you like this type of video, please like and subscribe. There you go. So again, uh, that is the use of uh, that one over there. So if you want to keep repeating that same uh, sound effects, then just hit the loop button and it, it will repeat that sound effects. Now let's try to record the sound effects uh, from this iPad, specifically from YouTube. I have selected clapping sound effects. Okay, so if we're going to top this one from here and then let's top this one also over there. And uh, by the way, I would like to emphasize that you do not need to record all of it if you don't want to. If you want to stop the recording, just simply tap that one more time and it will stop the recording. And now let's listen to our recorded sound effects. Okay, there you go. And by the way, in this uh, type of a sound card this time, you can, you can control the volume from here of your sound effects or whatever you recorded from here. So you can turn it up from here. There you go. 
Now let's go to the next uh, volume knobs on here. So the, again, as I mentioned earlier, the pad uh, is just uh, the volume control of your recorded sound effects on here. And now let's move on to the next volume knobs on here. And this is the reverb. Okay, so the first one is the depth and then the decay time. So the depth is the short reverb and then the decay time is a long reverb. Okay, let's uh, turn this up for the first one here. Sound check, testing one, two, one, two, three, four. And if you want to turn your decay time on high, then the reverberation is longer. Okay, let's uh, uh, do it. Sound check, testing one, two, one, two, three, four. And if you want to turn it up some more, sound check, testing one, two, one, two, three, four. Sound check. Okay, let's uh, move it down again. Okay, now in this button here, these are the mode for your vocals. Okay, let's test the first one. Okay, so this is the valet sound check. That's uh, what it sounds like. Okay, and this is the room sound sound check testing one, two. Sound check testing one, two. And this is the original. And by the way, just so you know, if you set your vocals here to original, even if you add a reverb on it, there won't be no reverb if you set that to original. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, there you go. Sound check. And this is now the karaoke. And of course, for singing purposes, you would like to add some reverb to it. Okay, sound check testing one, two. One, two, three, four. Sound check. Testing one, two, three, four, and the maximum sounds like that, but I don't need you wanted it that way. Okay, anyway, that's uh, what it sounds like. And now let's uh, move on to the next one. Okay, this is the church sound, sound check. Testing one, two, one, two, three, four. And then the last one. Okay, sound check. Sound check, testing one, two, and this is uh, kind of the default one on here. Sound check, testing one, two, and the hall, of course, you can add reverb to it. Sound check, testing one, two, and let's go back again to the next one. Sound check, testing one, two, and this is valet, so same, you can add reverb to it. Sound check, testing one, two, so room, you can also add uh, reverb to it. Sound check, testing one, two. So as I mentioned, if it's the original, uh, there won't be no reverb if you select the original. Sound check, testing one, two, one, two, three, four. So of course, karaoke should have reverb to it. Sound check, testing one, two, one, two, three, four. So church also, you can add reverb to, to it. Okay, so let's go back to hall. Okay, there you go. And now let's move on to the next one. So side chain, the side chain is, for example, you wanted to talk and you want to add some background to that, then that is the use of that. Okay, let me play this background music on here. And as I uh, turn on the side chain on here, your background music should go down. And as you stop talking, your background music should go up. Okay, let's play this one. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you can control the volume from here. Also, okay. Okay, if I'm going to turn on the side chain this time, and I'm going to talk sound check. There you go, sound check, sound check. So as you notice, you could hardly hear the background music unless I stop talking. Okay, there you go. So that's uh, the use of the side chain. Okay, let's uh, turn it off now. And now for the music only, this is to uh, make a song that has vocals. So if you want to convert that to a, somehow a karaoke song or minus one, so you can sing along with it, then that is the use of that. Let's give it a try with this one here. Okay, so as you notice, it has vocals on it. And if I'm going to turn on the music... Okay, there you go. So I know the background music is not as great, but that's uh, the way if you want to convert uh, the song that has vocals and if you want to sing along with it. I know most of the most of the YouTube songs that I've tested, they're not good. So I should say this should be your last option only. If there is a karaoke available, then use that instead of this one. Okay, let's turn it off now. Now, uh, what is the use of this dry wet? So the dry wet is if you turn this on, what will happen is even if your uh, 
vocals has reverberation, it will remove the reverberation. Also, it will only record your vocals, but not the background music. Okay, let's uh, play this one. Okay, so as you notice, I am currently playing this one right now and my vocals has reverberation. As soon as I turn on the dry wet on here, you will notice my vocals will be flat, no reverberation. Plus, you won't be able to hear the background music from here. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on now. Okay, there you go. So as you notice, my vocals has changed and I am the only one who can hear this time that background music that I am playing. Okay, let me turn it off now. Okay, and this one also. And now let me show you the next feature on here, the loop back. As you notice, I had stopped the recording from this phone on here because I wanted to show you what is the difference if you are going to record from this phone here and from this uh, computer or laptop on here. Okay, first of all, the loopback function on here uh, you can only use this uh, function if, for example, your background music is coming from a laptop and at the same time you are recording or doing a live streaming from that laptop. What it does is, for example, you are recording and as you turn on the loop back on here, it will also record the background music. So same thing, if you are doing a live streaming, as you turn on the loop back on here, your audience should be able to hear that background music. But once it's, it's turned off, so something like that it's off your audience will not be able to hear the music you are playing from this laptop so if you are going to uh, let's say for example if you're going to do your streaming or recording from a different device other than from this laptop it doesn't matter even if the loopback is on or off it doesn't matter the background music is still there okay let's give it a sample let's start off from here so let's start recording now from here Again, I am now recording from this uh, camera and the audio you are hearing is the recorded audio from this uh, camera. And now let me play the background music from this laptop. Okay, and uh, by the way, to uh, control the volume is uh, just locate the volume of your laptop. That's where your volume control and plus here. There you go. Okay, now as you can see, I am playing a background music from this laptop. And even if I turn this uh, on, okay, you can still hear it. And if I'm going to turn it off, the look back is off and still you can hear the background music. Okay, so now let's stop the recording from here. Okay, so let's uh, let me pause this one also here. And now let me record using this laptop where the backend music is coming from. Okay, let's start the recording. Okay, so I am now uh, recording this one. So the audio you will be hearing this time is the audio coming from the recorded audio video from this uh, laptop. Okay, let me play this background music again. Okay, there you go. So I am playing it right now, as you can see on here. So I am playing it right now and, and I am the only one who can hear it because the loopback function is here is still off. If I'm going to turn it on, there you go. Loopback is now on. So you should be able to hear that uh, background music that I am playing. So this is the same as uh, if you are doing live streaming. Your audience should be able to hear the background music you are playing if this loopback feature or function here is on. But if it's off, so something like that. So now that I'm recording, there shouldn't be no background music playing. I am the only one who can hear it and you can only hear my voice. Okay, again, let me turn on the loopback. There you go, loopback is turned on. You should be able to hear again the background music I am playing. There you go, and that's uh, the use of the loopback feature on here. Okay, let's stop now the recording. And also, let's stop this one here. Okay, let's turn the loopback off this time. And the denoise button on here, I always uh, turn this on myself because it does lessen the uh, background music or any uh, unwanted uh, background uh, voices or noises as you're doing your recording or streaming. There are a few things that I almost forget to mention. So right now, as you can see, I am currently using the Beam 800 condenser microphone. So now let me show you if you would like to connect your background music to the Maano Caster E2 using Bluetooth. So what we will do is we will be removing the 
this is the chord to connect to our background music. Okay, and so now that that is removed, so what you will do is just simply go to your uh, settings from that device and uh, go to Bluetooth, make sure the Bluetooth is turned on, so something like that. And if it's your first time to, uh, to pair the Monocaster E2 to the source of the background music, you should be able to see it at the bottom here. But since I connected this one already earlier, it should be on top here. Okay, it says here Monocaster E2, and it now says connected. And you can tell that it is that your Monocaster is connected to a device because you will tell over here if the Bluetooth icon there is solid, solid blue or purple, then that means it is connected to a source. So if it's not here, that it could be connected to something else or a different source. So again, that is uh, how to do it. Okay, so now let's play a background song on here and let's check if that is connected to here wirelessly or using Bluetooth. Okay, there you go. So as you can see, the uh, audio coming from this one here is connected to your Monocaster E2. And to uh, control the volume from that is same. You can control it from here to lower it, something like that. Or you can control the volume from the source of that background music itself. So that would be from here. Okay, so lower it or to make it louder. Okay, there you go. Okay. There it is. Okay, let's pause this one now. And the last one here is the battery indicator here. So the battery indicator there, that gives you the 25% uh, increment. So for example, if uh, there are two lights uh, are on only over there, so that means you only have 50% in your battery. And if there's only one green light is on, or you can see on there, that means you're almost low battery. You only have 25% of your battery. And that's all I can share for today. I hope this video gives you an overview as to the feature of Monocaster E2. And thank you guys for watching and for all your support. And if you want more of this type of video, please give it a like. And if you want more of this type of video, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you are always updated for all the upcoming videos I will be posting. Keep safe and until next time.